West Africa, its population has increased fivefold over the last 65 years. And this demographic boom that we keep on quoting uh, is accompanied by a spatial redistribution of population. And the most visible manifestation of these settlement dynamics is urbanization. The number of people living in cities in West Africa has risen by a factor of 30 in these 65 years since 1960, uh, 50. So it, it moved from about 5 million to 150 million today. And if you've got, and that represents about 42% of the overall population, if you've got 42% of your population living in urban areas, it means that there is a correspondingly increasing growing number of people that are no longer engaged in agricultural activities. And we estimated at the SWAC that the share of the population dependent on only agriculture for their living decreased from 90% in 1950 to about 50% today, in 2010. Mm -hmm. To be precise. So that means that uh, back 60 years ago, we had nine producers for one consumer. Today, we've got one producer for one consumer. So there are proportionally less and less agricultural producer per consumer. And I would estimate also say that even in rural areas, globally for our 17 countries, now you've got 25% of the population in rural areas that are no longer engaged in agricultural activities, 25% at least. And so when you distinguish between, if I've got the slide, that's better. Uh, if you distinguish between, when you distinguish between the agricultural and non-agricultural population, so you've got a first idea of the division of labor, but you've got also a first estimate, a first approximation of the size of the food market. Because that is one of the main uh, key st stylized facts that's occurring in the region, is if you've got 50% of your population that is no longer engaged in agricultural activities for their living, it means that there has been major transformation in the way households acquire food. Today, uh, household food needs are increasingly being met through the market. And that means something very important in the way we think development and we think our policies and programs. So markets have become today the primary source of food supply, at least for West African households. Michigan State University estimates, I think the study was in 2000, published in 2011, done in 2010, for five of our seven countries, they estimated that markets provided between 62%, a country like Burkina Faso, to 87%, a country like Senegal, of household food supply. And urbanization is a determinant factor of that trend, of that transformation. First of all, because in urban areas, uh, most of the households are going to buy their food on the market, with an average of about 93% for the region. Uh, but if you look at Côte d'Ivoire, for example, there you can see that the observed rise in proportion of the food boat on the market, which is uh, dark orange there, is matching, matched quite well with the increase in the pace of urbanization. So today, for the region, we can state that the markets provide at least two-thirds of the food supply. Okay, so now what we need to have is an idea of the size of this West African food market. What does it represent? Because there are lots of numbers that have been published uh, that are maybe very divergent, very different. We estimated uh, first of all, to estimate the size of this food market, we've got first to estimate maybe the size of this food economy, because not everything circulates on the market still. And by food economy, we mean the system of economic activities extending from primary producers to consumers aiming at providing food. Because one key fact is that 
almost all food is more or less processed in some way. And uh, using the recent uh, World Bank data, World Bank has been uh, doing a big work on trying to compile and aggregate uh, consumption and expenditure survey for uh, lots, of, lots of countries, including our 17 West African countries, we maybe for the first time are able to come up with, I think, a better estimate of the size of this food sector and of this food market. So estimated as a sum of the food consumption in monetary terms, we say that the West African food economy amounts in 2010 because that's the only date we can estimate it robustly, to about 175 billion US dollar. So that means it represents about 36% of the GDP. It makes it the first sector of the region. Just to give you an idea of the divergence on that estimate, some uh, recently published report from the French, I can say it, I mean, uh, from the French Development Agency, uh, building on work done by the CIRAD, comes with, for about the same time, for about the same country, so just add Cameroon, they add a country, Cameroon, and they come up with a figure of 32 billion. We are saying 175 billion. And I think that's a very prudent, careful estimate. Uh, and if about two-thirds of that overall food economy is traded on the market, that means that you've got 120 billion that are exchanged on this market. It's huge. Huge for the region. And it's changing very quickly. Uh, that 175 billion US dollar is split about evenly between the urban and the rural uh, households. And Given that we've got an urbanization rate of 42%, that means that um, an urban consumer spends about 50% more on food than a rural consumer. And given that urbanization is not likely to go down for the next two decades at least, then that means this food market and this food economy are going to go on quickly going to go on growing quickly. And so markets play a, cru a crucial role now in food security. That we all, I think, uh, and, and prices play a, cru a crucial role in markets. So an important question uh, to ask is to know whether or not uh, West African food products are price competitive. So we just graph the price level index for food for all countries. You can't maybe see all the blue, light blue dots, but you've got all the countries relative to their GDP per capita. So, and, and, and the logic, I mean, the rationale is behind is that food price level increase with development. Uh, and the economies with the uh, lowest food prices are unsurprisingly in Africa and in Asia. However, Africa, the blue dots, and West Africa in particular, um, show significantly higher food prices than Asia, for example, for its level of development. Well, that is a fact. It's a very difficult fact to interpret. It's an even more difficult issue to address. So we've got to be careful when we try to interpret what it actually means and what we've got actually to do. But what is sure uh, is that um, this question of the price competitiveness of the West African food sector needs to be much further investigated and tackled over the, for the next coming 10 years. It's a crucial issue as the market is expanding as food, group, as food products are becoming more and more maybe tradable, that issue becomes very, very important. Uh, but this emergence of uh, the food market, uh, this progressive integration into a market economy, has led and is leading to major transformation, first of all, in the agricultural sector. I'm going to try to talk a little bit about that. To meet this growing number, of, uh, of, of consumers, these growing market demand. So West African farmers uh, have had to produce more 
and have and have had to produce a surplus. And we believe at the SWAC that they have proved able to do so. Between 1980 and 2010, agricultural production growth, the calories, averaged 3.7% a year, making West Africa one of the fastest growing regions in the world, 1.8 percentage point above demographic growth. Demographic growth. And yes, imports have increased substantially in volumes, substantially, but in kilocalories, in share, their share has remained, their share uh, out of uh, total regional food supply, food supply, food supply is the proper word, uh, has remained rather constant. So yes, imports are increasing tremendously in volumes, but as a share of the food supply, and that's just FAO stats, uh, food balance sheet data, which we can question, that we can question, of course. Um, and this translated, and keeps on translating, into increased share of marketed quantities in total production. There, I just focus on maize. And for example, we observed that the marketed surplus are rising faster than production reflecting, in that case, the shift of maize towards a cash crop today. Today, I mean today, 2007, at the date we computed that, the, all the data were not available, uh, a total of 4.8 uh, million tons are marketed, uh, are put on the market in West Africa, compared to 0 0.6 million tons in the early 80s. And this growth in production and surplus, so with proportionally less and less producer per consumers, is not just the result of an extension of a cultivated area. We estimated that the gains in hills, the dark brown there, have been particularly significant since the early 2000s, and now accounts for 40% of production growth, agricultural production growth. So what we want to say with that just very simple graph is that agricultural intensification is underway, that West Africa agriculture is anticip anti intensifying, sorry, is intensifying, and that is closely linked to these settlement dynamics and the emergence of the market that is the result of that. Uh, yet, of course, we've got these are average numbers. Uh, yet, these transformation in agriculture are not occurring everywhere at the same pace. And the agricultural landscape uh, in West Africa is becoming more and more diverse, more and more heterogeneous. And this diversity, we think, can be in part explained by the spatial dynamics of population. So, this map. <coughs> shows the rural densities. And when overlaid with, with a map of the urban network, we can see that uh, rural density is higher in the proximity of uh, an urban agglomeration. So our interpretation at the SWAC is that connectivity to urban markets, to urban centers and their markets, both for inputs but also for agricultural outputs, is a determinant factor of the transformation of agriculture and of this rural economy. Maybe better, it explains maybe better the transformation than some agroecological conditions. But this emergence of the food market as the region is urbanizing is also a main driver of change in the overall food economy, not just in agriculture, but the overall food economy further down the value chains. So we say that these food products produced domestically plus imported food that eventually reach West African food consumers, so who pays at the end a total of about $175 billion in 2010, represent about 36% of the GDP. And the ratio between the monetary value of this food economy and the agricultural GDP give a first approximation, estimation of this process of diversification 
and value addition in these agro-food value chains. So it indicates the degree of development of commercial activities and the level of structural transformation in the agro-food sector. So this ratio is equals to 1.6 in 2010. That means that, 60 that, that the food economy is 60% larger today than the sole agricultural sector. And farms, as we all know, produce other things than products for human nutrition. They produce wool, they produce cotton, that have got other usage than human nutrition. So, although agriculture remains a pillar of the West African economy, it does, yet, at least today, 40% of the food economy is no longer agriculture. It's not a good agriculture. So these post-harvest segments of the value chain are becoming more and more important, almost as important today to food security than agriculture. So what can we say, what does the data say on, these, on the development of these segments, on these downstream segments in particular? So let's have a look on the consumption side. So still using these uh, data that comes from national data but that have been aggregated by the World Bank. Um, we have uh, uh, kind of tried to replicate what uh, some others from Michigan State University, Thomas Rudin and others, have done from uh, Southern and Eastern Africa. We've tried to replicate that for Western Africa. This had not been entirely done. And we observe that uh, today, processed foods account at least for 39% of total food consumption in 2010. And there we are in monetary <coughs> terms, we're not in kilocalories. That's an important thing to note. Um, usual, there's some results we shouldn't be surprised. We sh can be surprised by that amount, at least 39%. Uh, a few things. A few, a few things we are not very much surprised about is that uh, urban households are larger consumers of processed food compared to rural households, 42% in cities and 36% in rural areas. Of course, there is a gradient with income, the richer consuming more processed food than the poor. But what is also an interesting information, not just uh, the amount of processed food, I include also very light processed food. Meat is considered a processed food. What is interesting as well to note is that uh, even for the poorest in rural areas, processed food represents 35% of their total monetary value dedicated to consumption, food consumption. So that means that processed food enter the household food basket at a very low level of income. It's not just for the urban middle class in Africa. That's not just right. And so what it means, what I guess what I want to say is that uh, there cannot be a meaningful data system to monitor food security if it focuses only on farms. So there is a need for a data system for the entire food economy. That includes data about the primary producers as well as data about other sectors of the food economy. And maybe I'm mistaken, and that can be subject of the discussion, and that's also maybe the responsibility of the international institutions, but I've got the impression that this data system is not yet in place at all, at least for West Africa. So what do we see in the data that's available as to the development of this downstream segment of the value chain? For example, the UNIDO produce uh, with the OECD uh, the very, very famous Indestat database on manufacturing. So Senegal, Nigeria, Ghana, and Cap Verde are the only countries that are reported in the UNIDO database for the West African countries. Uh, and detailed data is either scarce or sparse or stops in the 90s. We've got more or less proper data for Senegal. So what we see for Senegal is that manufacturing uh, activities have been increasing at a 12% uh, rate, compound rate, average rate, compound rate, since 2000. So three percentage points above uh, the growth rate of agriculture. 
Food, beverages, and tobacco, which is a sector producing for human nutrition, got to control for tobacco, maybe if you want to have a good idea of the food sector, is also increasing over the period by 50%. Of course, we've got the impression from the data that its share in, in total manufacturing is decreasing. That is not contradictory with the fact that other industries are growing fast. But we can't actually say a lot, much, a lot more than that. We can't make a very clear statement out of that. So again, I think what I try, I want to say is that um, the food economy in West Africa is very likely to have undergone and to be undergoing massive change, structural change, and yet we don't seem to be having any kind of monitoring system in place. And when I just focus on food security and food security network that exists to monitor the food security situation, like the one we are currently co-managing with the SEALs, the FSCR, we actually monitor uh, the agricultural campaign every, uh, every year, producing the official data as to the agricultural campaign for West Africa. We now have been trying to go a bit more into nutrition, and that has been uh, kind of the motto for the past five, ten years, and we have been monitoring some vulnerable group, women, children under five, etc. But so kind of monitoring the two extreme, and we're just kind of missing a lot of things in the in, in the in the in between. So I just want to, uh, for the conclusion, would like to recall my three messages: is that markets play a crucial role in food security, both in urban and rural areas, and that is the result of the fact that population is occupying space differently that we might be lacking that understanding of the importance of space and spatial transformation, that these market dynamics are transforming agriculture towards more intensification, in particular around urban areas, for farmers better connected to markets. And that my third message would be that post-harvest segment of the agri-food value chain are becoming more and more fundamental to food security, but we don't seem to have a lot of global information, regional information, macro information on the development of this segment. So we can ask ourselves several questions, but I think it will come up in the discussion. Um, I've just tried very quickly to draw the implication for policy and programs. Um, We've been involved in the ECOWAS plus 10 process, that means the common agricultural policy of the ECOWAS, which is, uh, which is ending its 10-year process and renewing its common vision for 2000, at, the, at the, 2025, uh, the 2025 horizon. And while we strongly advocate for a strongly, clearly market oriented policy towards its own regional market, and the opportunities that it represents. And for market to function properly, they need infrastructure. We all know they don't just need hard infrastructure. There is also the need for soft infrastructure. But there is clearly a big lack in terms of hard infrastructure and just simple road infrastructure that are, able, that are going to help farmers being better connected to market, but also maybe more exposed to the international competition. There is need for norms. Uh, at ECOWAS, you've got uh, the quality program that is trying to develop norms for uh, produce this, uh, for the export markets, but there's no norms for uh, the regional markets. Doesn't mean that we need the same level of norms, but we need some kind of norms as for, to fluidate the information as this market is expanding. There, there is something that needs to be tackled. Uh, as I said, we all agree that I mean, not, we are not all. I don't want to say what I'm saying. But, the agricultural landscape is becoming more and more heterogeneous, and well, we think that well, that, let's agree that policies got to be more targeted, but I think they've got to be specially aware. We've got to, we've got to develop specially aware programs and policies, and uh, food security strategies got to be integrated with uh, that, that coming from the agricultural sector, got to um, be integrated with uh, industrial policies, with transport policies with health sectors policies uh, 
and help also towards the better coordination of these actors along the value chain. These value chain are becoming more complex, longer in terms of number of activities. So there is a strong need for actor coordination within this value chain. Thank you, I'm done.